ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. All right, um, so this is just a little uh, trick. Oh, cool, you can see in the chat. Um, those of you, if you're watching, if you watch this on YouTube, you won't be able to see it, but I'm showing um, a way that I use a tool that's uh, freely available, or at least part of it is. I think the other part you have to pay for, but it's a way to work with FileMaker's clipboard and get things on and off super quickly, but I mean, just to be able to do it in a multitude of ways. So there is this library that's available that you can see here. It's on GitHub. Dan Shockley, who is in the chat, he um, created these FM Clip tools. So this only works for Mac because it is Apple Script based. But I'm going to show you how to hook this up to a really cool tool called um, Better Touch Tool, which is something that I use. So Let's see, you can see right there, there's a little icon right there, Better Touch Tool. And I think you have to, I think Better Touch Tool, you do have to pay for that. But this is just an absolutely cool way of working with the clipboard. Now, normally working with FileMaker's clipboard, you have to convert it off of the OS clipboard into XML and then convert the XML back into a FileMaker native object or into something that FileMaker can actually paste. Now, Normally we do that with plugins, the, the monkey bread plugin, the uh, base elements plugin, that will do these things, but watch how easy this is. Um, let's hide that for right now or take that down in the screen. That is the better touch tool, which I'll be showing you. I'll bring that up later. I'm just going to show you how this actually works. Then I will show you how you hook it up. So right here on screen on FileMaker, I'm in layout mode and I have this particular button, obviously one, two, three. And it's a hassle to go in here and have to click um, to assign a script and then select the script that you want and change everything. For me to go and modify this to change it to a different script, and in this case, it's the same script, it's just a different parameter. I have to click in and go to each one. Now the HUD actually shows you in cycles right here and if it was different scripts, we would obviously have a different script right here. But working with a clipboard is really cool. So I just select this, I copy it to my clipboard, which I just did with Command or Control C. Now I'm going to draw a letter on my screen with the mouse. So I'm going to draw, I have two letters, I have G and S. G is for get and S is for set. It's really that simple. And I, I draw an exaggerated G. So hopefully this shows up on the screen as I draw. You can see that I'm drawing an exaggerated G that goes across the back right there. That just copied this object to the clipboard. Now I just go over to an editor like VS Code and I'll delete everything here, but I'll paste this. And so I've got all of the data that came from that object. So here, once you've got the XML into an editor, you can find and replace whatever you want. So if I do con uh, command option, find and replace, and I look for a uh, script name, you can see that I have the script name here and I have it in three different places. But if I wanna change this script in FileMaker, it's so much easier rather than having to copy and paste or go into the HUD, I'll go into my scripts and I'll create a completely different script and I'll just call this different script. So there we go, I'll copy that name, which I just did. We'll save that script. We'll go to this since I already copied it and we're just going to replace what was the former script with the new script right here and just do a find and replace. Now formula, uh, you always wanna check the number of occurrences of something just in case it's a common word. But in this case, I know that there's three buttons, only three occurrences of the script. I click replace and it should be done in there. I should be able to now search for different, and you can see that it actually replaced the name of the script right there. So how do I get this back in? Well, I just select all, copy it, go back over to FileMaker, and then here, I'm just going to do S, like that. So I just drew an S on my screen, and now I can click and I can paste. So this new object you can see right here, the first one will double click, we can see that it is going to script name. We'll go to this object, double click, and this one is going to different script. So find and replace is absolutely awesome for being able to, uh, to completely replace in the XML and you just need to be able to get this on and off of the clipboard. 
Now there's multiple ways that you can do this. We're essentially just using Dan's scripts to do this. And I'm using a tool called Better Touch Tool. I watched a video thanks to Josh Orman showed me Josh Halpern's uh, video where he uses Text Expander. Well, I'm using Better Touch Tool and I'll show you how to hook it up. There is also, if this will show, I don't know if I can show it. I can't show it uh, right now. But um, Stream Deck, I have a little Stream Deck tool right down here beside me, which when I'm switched into FileMaker, I actually have buttons that allow, I just push to copy it to the clipboard or get it. So there's two methods. There's the drawing method on the screen, which I use mostly on the mouse. And then there's also the, uh, if I'm feeling like pushing buttons, you can use Stream Deck. So let's look at how we get this. First off, what you need to do as I go to Chrome is you have to download Dan's library. And the way that he's coded the library, I'll go over it and show you on the desktop how it actually works, is that one Apple script calls another Apple script in order to get it to work. So he created um, basically like a controller script, and we'll see that. So you are going to need to, on this code, uh, basically do this. If you've not worked with it before, Git is already installed on your Macintosh, and you're essentially going to need to get this repository onto your machine. The way that we would do that is we would use a terminal, which I will show right here, bring that one on screen. So we would use this URL that we have right here, and in a terminal, we would go to a location. Uh, in this case, um, I'll just go here to my desktop, not advisable, but here on my desktop, I would actually copy that URL, which we have right here. You can click the little button, or you can do whatever, I copied it, so over here, I would just go and type in git, git, clone, and then paste in that URL. Now, this is going to download the repository, which is what you need. You need the scripts that Dan has made available. Once you have those available, which I already have them in, um, I already have them here in my finder. We can see them right here. So I have a bunch of repos, of FileMaker repos, a bunch of different repositories from all over GitHub. And here is the repository of the FM clip tools. Well, the two scripts that are the magic scripts are this clipboard FM to FM objects to XML and uh, clipboard XML to FM objects. Now, I won't go into this in depth, but both of these scripts rely on this script right here. Unless you go into Apple Script and you'll, you rewrite it. And I'll show you, I did make just one change in these two scripts on my local machine for the purpose of being able to uh, have notifications displayed a little bit differently. And I'll show you where I made that change. But we need to wire these up into um, Better Touch Tool. So we'll bring up Better Touch Tool. And this tool, I won't go uh, into it in depth. Let me switch over and make sure this is available. Um, Better Touch Tool, switch to it. Where'd it go? There it is at the end right there. So in this tool, you have multiple ways that you can set up all kinds of different configurations. We can see right here that if you've got a laptop, you can use Touch Bar. Stream Deck is a beta feature, which takes control of a Stream Deck, and you can do things there. You can do things based on the Magic Mouse, Trackpad, Keyboard Shortcuts, Normal Mouse, Siri Remote, everything. Well, one of the ones that I like is this one right here, Drawings. Drawings actually lets you create a drawing on screen. So you can see right here that I have, um, I have it in all apps. Well, you can do things on an app specific basis. This is actually a, a duplicate right here, this G, because when we select FileMaker Pro right here, we're going to see the G and the S. So I actually just need to delete this one. Let's go ahead and delete that because that isn't needed. So these two letters that I draw on screen only apply in FileMaker Pro because I've selected this app. Now, I could select all apps, which would be universal, but I make sure and I do this in FileMaker just because it's a little bit easier. So how do you hook this up? Well, these drawings, let me show you how you create a drawing. You click the little plus right here and it comes up with this little palette and you can draw whatever letter you want. I, or it doesn't even have to be a letter. It can be like a, you know, some type of funky squiggle. If you can remember how to do that, um, I would basically just uh, click finish and save gesture. And if I could repeat that thing, then fine. You can reset the drawing. And I chose an, uh, an exaggerated G. So you start and you draw and then you go over. Well, you can also click right down here, add another variation of the same gesture. 
in order to increase recognition. I suggest doing at least two or three of them, and then you finish and you save your gesture. Once you've got that gesture, it saves all the gestures, by the way, and you can reuse the gestures across different applications. So if I draw a G, in this case, in FileMaker Pro, I can also use the G within Final Cut Pro for a completely different shortcut. So now what we need to do as I delete this one is we simply need to hook up the gesture to the actual script. And this is so easy. All we do is you click this little plus right here and you can see that I've already done it with this particular thing and you just type in Apple script. Now it has two different Apple script methods. It's got an async, which that's just gonna happen without a response. We don't really need that because we want this to actually happen. So I chose a blocking, meaning the Apple script needs to finish and get back, but since we're only running that one Apple script, it's just great right there. So in the action, actually, let's go ahead and, and put in the uh, action so I can show you um, Apple script, Apple script blocking. So initially what it's going to do is it's going to come up with the uh, just regular source Apple script where normally you would uh, put in your Apple script code here. Well, we don't need the code. Dan has already taken care of that for us. He's already created the code. So we want to select this option to source an Apple script from a script file. And this is all you really have to do is you get this little button right here, choose Apple script file. And we're simply just going to target that particular file depending on what direction you want. So we switch over to my finder. We can see right here that uh, in my repos, I downloaded it. Again, make sure that you download your repo to a location that you're gonna keep it, not like the desktop where I initially showed it. But we just choose Apple script file. And in this particular case, the G is the get. So for me, get is the clipboard FM objects to XML. So I'm getting the object off of the XML. I choose Apple script file right here. It comes up with a dialog. Just drag the script right into the dialog. It will actually highlight FM objects. We click open and that's it. Um, we would click save and it's now running it twice uh, in this particular case because I already have it. But you do the same thing for S. I'll go ahead and uh, delete this particular one right there. But that's all you have to do in order to get and set from the clipboard with this G and S on the drawings. Now, if you want to support the Stream Deck version, unfortunately, you can't uh, copy this. I wish you could, but you can't. So you just have to rewire the other one. So we switch over to the Stream Deck. And then on the Stream Deck, you can see right here, I've created two buttons, FM to XML and XML to FM. And again, they're both just running an Apple script blocking here. And when we select the action, it is simply, again, just pointing to the actual uh, script that you want. Now, there's one thing, one change that I did make to the scripts. And it is, let's see, we'll look at the script. Let's, actually, let's go to the, the script here. And we will take a look at this as I look off screen. We are doing one change to the script. There we go. So in the script, what uh, Dan has set up normally, and Eric is also somebody, uh, I forget the last name, you can see it on the repository. But in these two scripts, um, I should make a pull request, uh, but it would be up to you if Dan is watching this. Um, we open the script. And there's only one change that I made on both of these. And I'll show you where and what it is. Now, it won't show up when I actually copy something. Um, up here in the uh, top of my, um, let's see if I can zoom in right there. You can see that I've got this little, uh, the little icon that's telling me that uh, on Monterey that the microphone is in use. So when the microphone is in use, it mutes all of the notifications, but the notifications do actually happen. And so let's uh, take a look at what the notification is. So let's say, for example, I have something on my clipboard, like right now, I'll just copy this text. I copy this text and I'll run the script, which I will do in FileMaker. So we go into FileMaker and I'm just pushing the button. So a little notification happened and we can see right there, it says FileMaker clipboard. The clipboard did not contain any FileMaker objects. So by default, currently, as of the recording of this video, um, the Apple scripts are not using Notification Center. 
So what happens is whatever application is running the Apple script, that application wants to come forward if it does a dialogue. So when we go back over to the script editor and we uh, compile this with the little hammer right there, just to make sure it's good running code, we can see that this script started out with a display dialogue. Uh, the clipboard did not contain any FileMaker objects. So I simply did not want the dialog to come up because that means that a better touch tool needed to come up. And the better touch tool UI is not usually running and I don't need that to come forward. So I simply changed it to the notification center in order to display the same thing. And uh, that's the code right there that you could use. Let's make it a little bit longer in case you want to copy that. But it's basically just changing any of the notifications that use a display dialog. I change them to a display notification. And when I'm actually developing, if I draw the G or draw the S or hit the buttons and uh, nothing happens, I get the notification that comes up in the notification center unless I've turned the focus off. And uh, it doesn't work. But that's really all there is to it. Um, I love Better Touch Tool. It is so awesome to be able to draw things on screen. In fact, if I wanted to take a screenshot of this, this doesn't deal with the uh, with uh, you know using this uh, get and set for the uh, clipboard. But I just draw a, a little circle like an aperture that's the lens for me, and it brings up the screen uh, capture tool. I click screen capture and not only did because better touch tool lets you run multiple actions, it copied the, uh, it made the screenshot, put the screenshot into a screenshots folder on the desktop. So it saves the original in case I ever need to modify it again. And in this case, it's taking the screenshot and sending it to an application called clean shot X, where I can then put whatever type of notation on here. If I want to add some numbers, one, two, three, and then make some call outs, change, uh, change the text, whatever, uh, you know, one, do this. And so then you just basically save the screenshot in order to you know, post it to FM standards, which is what I use it for, or uh, providing any type of thing. So better touch tool and Dan Shockley's um, Apple script clipboard tools, Dan and Eric, let me give credit where credit is due. Um, here are your contributors right here, Dan, um, Eric Shagdar, um, Will, uh, Josh contributed some because he is using it with, um, uh, I, I use Typeinator and he says Typeinator doesn't work. I think it's, I forget what it is. Somebody can put it in the chat, text snape or uh, text, what is it? It's the original one that I text edit. I forget. It's a keyboard thing that actually will do the conversion for you. I think he wrote additional uh, Apple scripts and I'll try to get that uh, video uh, the link uh, on this video, but that is, uh, that's what I have. So that is my uh, show and tell. If anybody else comes in and uh, wants to show things, then cool. And I'm going to post this up on uh, YouTube so that other people can benefit from it as well. So uh, this is goodbye for the video, but I'm still going to be in the chat. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.